Jessica Lynch had just been deployed to Iraq to serve as a unit supply specialist in the Quartermaster Corps when her life was suddenly turned upside down. After the convoy she was traveling in took a wrong turn, the American soldiers were ambushed by aggressive insurgents near the town of Nasiria. The 19-year-old immediately tried to defend herself, but her rifle jammed. Then it happened. A rocket-propelled grenade slammed against the Humvee where Lynch was traveling, sending it out of control until it crashed against a tractor. The grenade blast and the crash left Lynch severely injured, and she was captured and taken to a hospital in Nasiria. The place would then be overrun by the Iraqi military, tasked with guarding the American prisoners of war. Thanks to a local informant, the U.S. authorities soon learned that Lynch was alive and held in the hospital. Navy SEALs then planned a large-scale rescue operation to breach into the enemy-occupied building and rescue Lynch from an ominous fate. When it emerged, the footage of the spectacular operation took the world by storm. The Ambush Born in a tiny West Virginia town of no more than 400 people, Jessica Lynch enlisted in the military when she was just 17, knowing that she could not afford a college education. Lynch was recruited before the events of September 11th, but the global situation soon shifted. Before she knew it, she was being deployed halfway across the world, even seeing the ocean for the first time. Soon after arriving in the scorching deserts of Iraq, Lynch was assigned to a convoy of the U.S. Army's 507th Maintenance Company and the 3rd Combat Support Battalion elements. On March 23, 2003, Lynch was traveling on the leading Humvee with three other soldiers and her best friend, Lori Piestua, who was driving the vehicle. While the convoy passed near the town of Nasiria, the U.S. troops mistakenly drove towards the settlement when they were supposed to detour around it. The area had a significant enemy presence, and as the Americans drew close, the Iraqi soldiers unleashed a relentless attack on the unsuspecting Americans. Chaos The convoy was attacked with rifle fire, machine guns, rocket launchers, and grenades as the U.S. troops scrambled to respond to the surprise assault. Lynch felt the full strength of the offensive as hundreds of bullets began to ricochet off her armored vehicle. The attackers drastically outnumbered the Americans and were firing from the windows and roofs of a nearby building, making it very challenging for the U.S. soldiers to repel the aggression. To make matters worse, many things went wrong just as the attack took place. U.S. vehicles became bogged in the sand, Jessica's rifle jammed, the convoy's most potent weapon, a vehicle-mounted 50 caliber machine gun, became unresponsive, and her gunner was injured. After close to an hour of fierce battle, the Iraqis fired rocket-propelled grenades just as Lynch's Humvee tried to evade the blasts and ended up crashing at high speed against a tractor by the side of the road. The three male soldiers perished, and Lynch and Lori Piestua were left severely injured and unconscious inside the Humvee. Prisoner of War The attack had been a massive victory for the Iraqi ambushers. They had destroyed most of the vehicles and eliminated or captured many of the Americans traveling in the convoy. The next time Jessica Lynch woke up, she was in a hospital surrounded by Iraqis. She was confused and hurt and had no idea what was happening around her. But something was clear. She was now in the hands of the enemy. Lynch's injuries were so severe that the doctors didn't believe she was going to make it, but she pulled through. However, her refusal to eat severely weakened her as the days passed, and she continued to be paralyzed from the waist down. Back in the U.S., global news outlets began to broadcast the images of American POWs captured during the ambush. Still, no news of Jessica would surface, leading U.S. authorities to believe the young soldier had likely not survived. But soon, a local lawyer named Mohammed Odeh al rehayef contacted the U.S. authorities and informed them about her state and the hospital she was being held in. The U.S. military immediately started planning a rescue operation. Still, they were not the only ones trying to rescue Lynch. The local Iraqi doctors also orchestrated a plan to take the soldier away from the guarded hospital and give her back to the American troops. 
During this attempt, she was snuck out of the building and put into an ambulance. However, as the vehicle reached the American line, the U.S. servicemen opened fire, fearing it could be a bomb car. Lynch was forced to return to her hospital bed, and her rescue would be left in the hands of the U.S. Navy SEALs. The Rescue When Jessica Lynch's rescue mission was approved, the U.S. Navy SEALs launched an unprecedented operation to rescue a soldier from behind enemy lines for the first time since World War II. On the night of April 1st, 2003, the Navy SEALs mobilized swiftly and silently, supported by Army Rangers, Air Force pilots, and several intelligence agents. Notably, it was the first time a rescue operation of this scale was recorded by the soldiers taking part in the mission. The footage shows the impressive tactical strategy followed that night. U.S. Special Forces first cut the power of the entire city of Nasiriya. Meanwhile, American troops attacked an Iraqi outpost across town, setting up a chain of detonations to create a diversion that sent every enemy unit away from where the rescue was to take place. Several American helicopters then rushed to the Nasiriya hospital, landing within the compound's main gates in mere seconds. Inside the hospital, Lynch woke up, startled by the sound of helicopters and gunfire, and she feared the worst. The Navy SEALs pierced the building in a swift and organized fashion, using their flashlights to illuminate the darkened halls. Suddenly, Lynch heard people speaking English and calling out her name. In a split second, the SEALs entered her room and informed her that they were there to take her home. Still partly paralyzed, Lynch was extracted on a stretcher and taken on board a helicopter, her hand clinging to a patch of the American flag and to the hand of the soldier that gave it to her. The rescue was announced that same night, and the footage was broadcast on television. The entire operation was a significant morale boost for all the U.S. soldiers fighting in Iraq. Controversy Despite the successful rescue and Jessica's overwhelming gratitude, the operation was immediately scrutinized. After careful reviews, Mohammed Ode al Rahayef's account of events was proven to be largely fabricated. He had indeed informed the U.S. military of Lynch's location, and for that, he was still taken to the U.S. as a war refugee, but many of the stories about having personally helped Lynch were uncovered as false. Before the rescue, U.S. defense authorities also spread false information, claiming Lynch had fought bravely and that she had neutralized several Iraqi soldiers before being captured. Lynch herself denied these claims, and the analyst concluded that the U.S. used the story as a propaganda piece to boost the troops' morale. The methods used during the rescue were also heavily criticized, with detractors saying that the U.S. used excessive force and that the whole operation was carried out as a spectacle for the cameras. Intelligence had shown that the insurgent forces had already left the hospital before the rescue, and that the U.S. forces didn't need to use such a display of power against the hospital's doctors, who were mainly trying to help Jessica. Additionally, the need to record the operation and produce the now infamous footage was also questioned. To this date, the rescue of Jessica Lynch remains a highly controversial affair, but many people do believe that it was an incredible show of American efficiency and the willingness of the U.S. military to not leave anyone behind. Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. And for more exciting military-themed content, don't hesitate to click on your screen and check out our other Duck Documentaries channels, where we delve into the people and the technology that change the world. Stay tuned.